Hello and welcome to Investing and Entrepreneurship. Today, I'm going to talk about SoFi and why it's going to 14 bucks. I'm going to give you a quick technical view. And welcome. Let's get into this video. Okay, so everybody knows SoFi announced quarters and SoFi flew up yesterday. Today, it came back down a little bit. But those earnings were monumental everybody had it wrong everybody called it wrong i have called sofi wrong in a couple things i've been expecting it to make pullbacks and it has not pulled back everything else i'm correct i'm saying long term sofi is great short term play it with caution but right now i'm telling you sofi is going to 14 bucks and then it's going to bounce around between 14 and 16 bucks and then once it pierces that resistance, it's going to 20, 21, 22, 25, 35. And I'm going to show you why today on this video. It's going to be a bit a, a bit long, but I'm going to try to make it the best content on SoFi ever because I am trying to improve the videos, okay? Let me know what you think of my work and let me know what you think of SoFi in the comments. Let's get into the video. Okay, let's get into technicals why SoFi is going to 14. Look, nothing fancy, nothing extravagant. Here, I try to keep the message real simple because investing in entrepreneurship is about making money from cash flow, investing in the stock market, and building wealth. Now, check out the technicals that I'm talking about, all right? If you see right here on the trend line of SoFi, on May 14, 2021, SoFi hit Fourteen ninety four dollars okay and if we go a little bit out which is still 2021 so if i hit another 1404 this was its way down because at this point everybody knows what was happening in the market right froth check this out obviously so if i kept running down the fives the sixes and this is when everybody was saying that SoFi was going to four bucks, okay? All the analysts called SoFi wrong. Most people have SoFi wrong. People called the student loans wrong, 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 wrong. Everybody was wrong about the student loans, okay? Quick number, student loans. There's 40 million people out there in the United States that need to refinance student loans. SoFi has only captured 1%, Anthony Noto's words. And I'm going to play Anthony Noto videos that you must watch along this video. I'll make it easy for you, okay? Let's keep going. Okay, let's look at the one month. If you look at that, it's going straight up, straight decent, strong trajectory. No pullbacks, even though I thought it would pull back to 8. When it went to 9 the first time, I thought it was going to pull back to 6. None of that. And here, it jumps, all right? Pre-earnings post earnings okay tremendous jump so if you paid attention to all the information that was reported and all the numbers that were reported and actually you get to know SoFi and you look at it as their business plan you will understand why this stock is going to $14 quick I am saying in the next 60 to 90 days 14 and then I do see this stock bouncing around the $16 between December and January, February. And then from there on, probably close the year out above 22, 23, 2024, okay? Close 2024, above the 2023 mark. Now, another thing that I talk about in my channel about investing that's different to everybody else is that I look at investing through the business eyes of a business person, okay? So my portfolio has purposes. And the, for me to achieve the valuation targets of my portfolio, I do add stocks. I kind of treat my portfolio as my own ETF, and I add certain stocks that I believe are going to help me get to my total target at a set period of time, whether it be two years, three years, or five years, all right? Even one year, even six months, okay? So I'm not going to get too much into that, but I am going to be doing more videos and more private courses on that coming up soon just the announcement let's keep going with the whys 
And look, what's the most important commentary on SoFi right now? Is this, the business model. SoFi's asset light. It doesn't need all kinds of branches. It doesn't have branches like all the traditional banks. That's cost SoFi doesn't have to deal with. All right? Another thing that SoFi has, SoFi is not acquiring its money from warehouse products for banks, meaning places where the banks go to pick up equity, to pick up cash, and then they got to pay a high rate for it. They're acquiring a good amount of their cash from their own customers, from people that are depositing. SoFi has a real good uh, percentage, annual yield on savings, and that is allowing them to capture a lot of money, and SoFi is reusing that money to lend it out at a nice profit. This is very important for this reason, okay? It needs costs to deduct in its business operations, but the fact that it doesn't have all these rents allows it to have more advertising costs, okay? And SoFi right now is heavily advertising, not only getting people ready for their student loan refinance, as they said, as Anthony said, there's 40 million people out there and they've captured about 1 million. And SoFi pretends to win. SoFi's team is a team of savage, wolf, shark, business hunters. Like, it's a great team, okay? They bring a lot of experience. These people know what they're doing, and they're going to hit their targets, and they're showing that they're going to beat their targets. But SoFi has so much money to market to the student loans, which hasn't even picked up that much business. But here's another one. SoFi also has mortgages, and SoFi is already advertising hard core to the to the people that 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 are their potential clients now this is why this is key we've experienced a tremendous in this uh interest rate hike meaning that so many people that are holding debt and have pulled new debt once interest rates start either uh stop growing or start looking like to shrink or just start to stay fixed banks are going to start to compete and there's going to be a lot of competition for the refinance and people are going to refinance. This means a lot of people are going to leave their traditional banks and they're going to find SoFi. So SoFi is going to be able to expand their share of the pie. So this is a very important thing to keep in mind. SoFi is just getting started. It has a bunch of products. It has a bunch of customers. Their customers are not just retail banking consumers okay it's not just people that need uh bank products right their customers include other banks sofi has technology that it sells to other banks to do their online banking a lot of traditional banks that have physical locations because they're old school they are behind on the technology technology sector so there's a tremendous amount of institutions united states is a nation that has the most banks in the world. U.S. is a big capitalist country. So, SoFi has a tremendous amount of institutional clients and prospects to also grow their market share. Also, at some point, SoFi is going to launch business services to capture small business clients. It has not opened that line of business yet, but it, it's already part of their business plan. Also, SoFi helps larger companies gain their financing or come to the market. It has proven clients. Now, go check who they are, okay? Drop it in the comments. I'm going to see if you know. So, n let's get into the comments. You need to watch what Anthony said. And I'm going to put it right here, okay? This is Investing in Entrepreneurship. I hope you like the content and you like the channel. Subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. But let's check out what Anthony has to say. Yo, Anthony Noto. Anthony, it's great to Pay have attention. you. Pay attention. Check it out. Um, check it out. You know, you're adjusted EBITDA, 77 million. You had 16% margins, 10 full points above a year ago. And I'm just curious what you did and what you're continuing to do to see that kind of margin improvement. Well, first, David, thank you for having me. Um, the biggest thing is that when we started to architect a business uh, five years ago, over five years ago in 2018 when I joined, we really focused on making sure we had the right unit economics by product. We have 
forward lending products, we have checking and savings, we have uh, invest product, a credit card product. In each one of those, we've sort of architected so they'll have very high variable profit. We're just getting to the point now where our financial services segment is starting to be profitable. So the lending business on a contribution profit basis has been very profitable. The technology business also pretty profitable. Um, but we've made a big investment in the last five years in building out the number of checking savings accounts and acquiring them, as well as credit card and invest. And we're now to the point where we're covering all of that acquisition cost. Um, we only lost about $4 million of contribution losses in that segment, uh, which improved to $20 million versus Q1. And in Q4, it was negative $44, $44 million. So we're, what we're starting to see is the scale that variable profit exceed the acquisition cost, which is now dropping to the bottom line. So great leverage in the business. Our incremental margins were over 40% on an EBITDA basis and over 30% on a gap net income basis. Right. Well, you mentioned, okay, that operating leverage and certainly the promise of it seems to be helping shareholders feel very confident about buying the stock. Something else? I mean, you added a lot of deposits. Now, you're paying a good amount for them, over for what, 4.2, 4.3%. Well, 2.7 billion sequentially. How it's not expensive. That That's not expensive. In terms of fueling, you know, your ability on the other side of the balance sheet. It's a critical point in driving both growth and profitability. So those deposits are actually a lower cost of funding for us um, than using warehouse lines. And we've had the bank uh, for about a year and a half. We've added more than two billion dollars of deposits bank. sequentially each quarter. 2.7, as you mentioned, this quarter. The interest we're providing is 4.4% APY on savings if you do direct deposit, but that's actually a lower cost than what we'd be paying the big banks and warehouse lines. So it's a lower cost of funding and a more stable type of funding. 90% of our nearly 13 billion of deposits is from direct deposit customers. We, we want to have that primary relationship. So we benefit in two ways. One, we have the spending that they do in that checking savings account, but their deposits help fuel the growth of our lending business. And we're one of the few banks that not only provide a high APY in deposits, but we then use those deposits to drive even better returns through our loans, which have high yield, much higher than a 4.4%. Anthony, we're showing the SOC chart, and, and the SOC has had a monster run this year of 150% almost. Even just since mid-May, the stock is up about 75%, and a lot of that is on the move by Congress to say, you know, Folks with student loans, you got to start paying in the fall, and then also the Supreme Court uh, knocking down President Biden's debt forgiveness plan. Uh, some analysts on the street, though, are worried about that notion that there is a Watch big opportunity coming. around student loan refinancing. Watch that what's that coming. is perhaps smaller than what investors think uh, there should be. And so I'm wondering if you could walk us through what you're seeing so far and if you can address that concern. Yeah, the interesting thing that I'd point out in this quarter is that we had our ninth quarter of record revenue. And that was driven by record revenue in our technology platform revenue, i.e. not lending, and our financial services uh, business, which also had a record quarter. So it was the first time in our history that our, in our ninth quarter, that record was driven by these two non-lending businesses doing so well. Our lending business has continued to do well also, but the diversification is what's being recognized. As it relates to student loans, there's businesses. 40 million Americans that still have federal student loans that they haven't refinanced. SoFi, in our history, has not financed more than 1 million people on their federal student loans. So there's still 39 million people out there for us to help lower their cost of paying back their student loans. But that's on the come. That wasn't in this quarter. This quarter, our student loan business was still relatively depressed. Um, we don't expect to see a meaningful pickup until the end of the year and going into 2024. But the larger thing I'd focus everyone on is that there's 40 million people. On the show today, we're really still looking at the stock popping this morning. And it was interesting. We thought we were going to see the worst of the, the, the regional banking crisis and, and fintech really struggling in the second quarter. It does not seem to be the case for SoFi. Talk about the, how this quarter has fared for you. Well, first, thank you for having me. Um, our 37% year-over-year growth marked our ninth consecutive quarter of record revenue. Uh, and for the first time, it was driven by our technology platform services business and our financial services business and not lending. Lending also performed well, um, but we've been on a march over the last five and a half years to build out a complete one-stop shop for your financial service needs. Um, and these other businesses are now importantly contributing to the growth at scale and soon to be contributing to the profitability as well. I think the biggest thing in the quarter that started to change for us is that the flywheel is really working between our increased brand awareness as well as the differentiation of our products. And that's driving great member growth as well as product growth. That larger scale is helping us drive towards profitability. 
Uh, we've been generating positive EBITDA uh, for several quarters now, um, but we're on the precipice of being gap profitable by the end of the year. Um, and our balance sheet is as, as strong as it's ever been with $3 billion of cash after generating or adding over $500 million of cash to the balance sheet. And regarding that target of achieving that sustained gap profitability for the end of the year, I mean, we still have some uncertainty here among consumers and especially as very tight lending conditions as well. What do you think is going to get you there? Yeah, it's really about continuing to execute on our plan. Um, what we're seeing is market share gains. We have a very differentiated uh checking savings account product. We're paying 4.4% interest if you do direct deposit with us in your savings account. We charge no fees. It's complete functionality from your phone. You can pay uh, any way that you want. You could pay a friend. You can use a debit card. You can use a digital wallet. We'll even send checks for you. So it's complete functionality all on your phone. Uh, in addition to that, our four lending products uh, continue to be very differentiated in our mortgage business as well as student loan refinancing, personal loans, and in-school loans. And then we have some earlier stage businesses like our credit card business and our invest business that are contributing as well. And then last but not least, we built our products on top of our technology platform, but we use that platform to actually drive revenue in a business um, in addition to the other financial services products. So we're half tech revenue and uh, as it relates to non-lending and, and half financial services products. And I do want to talk about some of the, the whole loan sales, because I know that in Q1, that was something analysts were concerned were not rolling off the balance sheets fast enough, but you disclosed $340 million in whole loan sales. Talk about that approach, because there are obviously still some whole loans they still know. on the books here for so far. Sure. So we have a, a three-legged stool for funding our loans. We have about $12.7 billion of deposits. We have over $3 billion of our own equity capital, and then we have $8 billion of warehouse lines. Um, because we have such almost $20 billion of, of funding capacity uh, from those three sources, we can hold loans longer instead of selling them. Um, we believe we'll generate a, a meaningfully higher return by holding loans than selling them at current prices. That said, we did do some sales in the quarter as it relates to personal loans and student loans to ensure that channel remains open for us, but we did it at very low volume at around the prices that are currently marked in our books. We're actually generating, generating a better return than, than the marks on our book, which is helping us drive net interest margin uh, so significantly. So we'll continue to look to maximize our return, whether it's holding loans or selling them. Um, ideally, we would like to sell them over time, but because we have such capacity and funding side of the equation, uh, we have the option to hold them longer and generate that excess return, which we're seeing come through in, in today's results. And of course, I have to talk about student loans because, you know, that's when SoFi was first kicking off, that's what it, most people knew SoFi for. And we knew that student loan uh, debt repayments were, were going to restart. And then you couple that with uh, the Supreme Court now also taking away President Biden's attempts at student loan forgiveness. How much of a boon is this going to be for SoFi? I mean, we see that student loan origination volumes were down 1% year on a year over year basis. So what's the, what are the next steps of growth in that market? Well, the great news is that we've been operating over the last three quarters without a robust student loan business, which in 2019 was our largest and most profitable business. Now it's relatively small. So our results today, as well as our outlook for this year, are not counting on the student loan business to contribute significantly. We do think there will be more of a recovery by the end of the year uh, and as we go into 2024. But the results today and our outlook doesn't really reflect a changed view on the student loan market. There's about 40 million Americans that still have federal student loans, and they can come to SoFi and refinance those student loans and either get a savings on their interest rate, and if not on their interest rate, they can extend the term to lower their monthly payment. If they take that second strategy of extending the term to lower their monthly payment, they can still pay what they oh, had planned on spending to pay it off at the same time or have the flexibility of paying a little bit less. And if rates go down in the future and they want to refinance later, they can because we don't charge any origination fees. There's no frictional costs or prepayment penalties. So they kind of have their cake and eat it too with the, with the product. So we do think there will be a fair amount of appetite on both of those, uh, those strategies. But again, there's about 40 million uh, people. Anthony Noto is the CEO of the year. What do you think? Comment, share, subscribe. Catch you on the next video.